No intro today. Nothing working with the machinery. Yeah. Welcome it happened to me as well. Well, in the past. Welcome. It happened to me and Martial not too long ago. I know how it feels. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Gate 7 International, your number one English source for all things Olympiacos. My name's Costa. I'm joined by Labro and I'm joined by Costa. What's happening, guys? Nothing much. Nothing much. <laughs> yeah, nothing much. <laughs> nothing much. Uh, Just enjoyed a game. A fantastic are you, game. Uh, are you a grumpy old man, Labro? Yes, I want to address this. I want to address this because I read the comments after the show. I don't want to be like I, I always want to improve and be best for the community. And a guy called me a grumpy old man and said I'm always mad. Um and I just want to say that guy like because you're always pissed off then. I, I'm not always pissed off. As you guys know, I'm quite a joyful young chap, as they say. I don't know. We've gone for beers together. So I just don't want people to think that I'm always mad and I'm an angry person, you know, about Olympiacos and stuff. I like to go to the stadium. I like to have fun. I'm not a grumpy old man. But I'll try to be better. I don't want to come off as negative all the time. It's really hard not to be negative sometimes watching the stuff we watch, reading what we read. But I'm going to be try to be better. So the guy who called me a grumpy old man, I'll try to be better here tonight for you all um, talking about the game. I do have some negative points I'm going to bring up, but I'm, I'm going to try to be positive. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm going to try to yeah. be positive. So that's, <laughs> cool. that's that. Ladies and gents, you know what to do. Hit the like button if you haven't done so already. Get other Olympiacos fans in here. Help the algorithm. Subscribe if you're joining for the first time. We're your number one English source for all things Olympiacos. Your international channel for the red and white legend. Big win today. Um, I was saying to you guys earlier, for me, it feels like it feels like a victory this season. The, the one I've enjoyed the most. Mm like relative to what this game was today, like going into it, tough, tough game away against Aris. For Aris, this was the game of the season. They only have the cup essentially like to play for. They're lying fifth in the league, uh, close to sixth. They could be out of the playoff, uh, playoff spots. And yeah, this was their, this was their game of the season. And for us, it was do or die because the cup's important because it's the only competition that leads to Europa League. And and we knew it was going to be hard with a one nil uh, only a one nil lead going into the game, and big question marks over the lineup and whether or not, in particular, Costas Dolagis would would start in goal. And I think that is part of the reason why I'm quite chipper tonight, because it's essentially Dolagis that enabled us to go up the other end, and you know. El Arabi to get get the winner and you know Olympiacos leave with a one nil win from Cleanthis Vikelidis and that's a, a a big a big result. But like you know Labro, you said there are negatives and the, the tonight's result it doesn't wipe everything under the carpet. But as a, as a starting point, like I I want to say that at least for tonight, I'm smiling. Like I'm happy tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you'll allow me, of course, I'll jump in first. I want to say, yeah, I, I, it was maybe the game that brought me the most happiness. I, I'm just thinking that Panathinaikos game up until the penalty of Avia was like the happiest I'd been all season. And that, that was so devastating. But tonight, I think a lot of people know that I was overly critical of Dorlakis the past two seasons, maybe because I said he wasn't ready. Like I preferred Christensen to play, but what I saw tonight was a confident goal. That's the one thing that, like, you can see the ability. He has the length. He has the – but it's the confidence he projects. And tonight he projected that confidence. And you can tell he was working on penalties. Look look at how he jumped out and the anticipation on that penalty versus the penalties for Ludogorets where he was just so tentative. Just a fantastic game. And it, it's not even to say, like, that was the point. He saved a penalty and Olympiacos go through. He made incredible saves all game. And projected confidence onto the team. He gathered the ball. He looked calm. It just absolute class. And I, it, it's like he's grown up in two years from from that Ludo Goretz game where the the confidence wasn't projecting. And absolutely fantastic from him. Um, I thought it was a brilliant night. There were some negative points. Um, 
but but I just want to touch on one thing where, again, like another person in the comments, I was reading the comments la last one, said I was a bit negative on Doi. I'm not negative on Doi. I really like him as a player, but I'm really worried about this idea of burnout among young players. And tonight you can kind of see, like, it, it's like I mentioned last episode, when a young player who hasn't played professional football, full, a full season of professional football yet, you do have this worry of burnout. We saw it with Agi Bukamara. And Doi looks like he needs some rest, right? Um, I, I will say that. That was one of the negatives that I'm a bit worried about Doi. Um, of course, he was sent off, which I don't know. It, it was close. I, I, I think it was a penalty, to be honest. I saw people saying it wasn't a penalty, whatnot. But yeah. he also dived in on another chance by Gray. I don't want to stick on this, but I, I am a bit worried about him. It's... It's one of those things Olympiacos has messed up a bit, managing young players once they break in. I think Popsi say needs to be reincorporated into the team to maybe give him a break. Um, but yeah, that, those were my initial thoughts. Let's come back to that. Um, I think you are you made some good points about Doi, and we can come back to that for sure. Costa, to get your kind of initial comments first. I mean, it was a huge victory for Olympiacos, and Olympiacos fans have every reason to celebrate like, I mean, we've made it clear this is not Olympiacos' best season. This is not Olympiacos' strongest season. Olympiacos started this season uh, in a worse manner than any other season uh, that I can remember of uh, after the Petr Nahronia. Uh So three different managers have come in. The, the team has been put together based on three different managers' styles, three different managers' needs, three different managers' Once uh, I, I made the example about, you know, about the, the apple pie, like, you know, it makes sense that a team looks uh, as chaotic as this uh, after a horrible start to the season. But Olivia Kos are starting to, uh, to pull things, to, to, to pull it together. It was less than two weeks ago when we were here wondering, can Olivia Kos actually win a big game? Because uh, they hadn't done so uh, all season. And not only have they won a big game, they've won three big games in a row uh, against the same opponent, granted, but still, those were do-or-die matches that Olympiacos had to win, at least two of them, uh, and they did so. Uh, especially if you consider that uh, Mitzel had the balls, uh, I think one of you already said it, to, to actually uh, take risks and start players who weren't traditional starters this season, such as Jolaikis, uh, between the sticks, who ended up being the man of the match. Uh, Vrusai at left back with Ramon coming in on his debut on the 86th minute. Diadie Samaseku in midfield, who we're all big fans of, but for some reason Mitzel doesn't consider him as a starter. Yoros Masuras uh, on the wings and Mathieu Valbuena at number 10, even though he's well known as being the best uh, impact player Olympiacos have. And they still did it. They still went through. It didn't look great. And for me, it makes sense because of the fact that Mitzel didn't start his traditional eleven. He made he he took risks. He started players that don't uh, that don't often start for the team. Incredible performance by Costas Jolax with four huge saves. One of them being a penalty against Andre Gray. It's unbelievable that this player not too long ago was considered uh, the next big thing in the Premier League when he took Burnley to the Premier when he took Burnley to the English top flight in 2016 after finishing the Championship's top scorer. I don't want to take anything away from Jolaikis, but that was a terrible penalty kick, but still incredible performance by Jolaikis. Absolutely composed, uh, showed the kind of experience and uh, composure that is way above his age grade, which right now he's 20 years old. Still reminds me of a young Dimitris Eleftheropoulos. Mm. In, very important for this team to protect this talent. Very important. I agree with Labro. Don't burn him out. Uh, I don't think that this performance warrants him to take Pasalakis' place as the number one. Huge games coming up for Olympiacos. This is going to be the toughest playoffs, uh, the, the, the most exciting playoffs in Greek football history. And it's only going to get even even tougher for Olympiacos right now because they're going to face Ike in the semifinals. And here's the kind of schedule Olympiacos are facing, right? Oli they're playing Ofi on Sunday. The next Saturday, Pauco Olympiacos in Tuba. After that, on Tuesday, it's Ike against Olympiacos in the Greek Cup semifinals at the Opapa Arena, where Ike are undefeated still. Then it's Panetolikos and Lamia, which is a good break. But then Panathinaikos at Karaiskaki on February 25. 
And then February 28th, Olympiakos I, Katekareskaki, in what could be a crucial and deciding semifinal clash. It's only going to get harder for Olympiakos. But I got to say, guys, like there's been a lot of negativity this season. Some of it is warranted. Some of it isn't. Personally, I've seen Olympiakos not winning the league how many times so far? Uh, four times, if I'm not mistaken. I've never experienced that much uh, negativity. So I have to mention this. Yes, this has been a very difficult season. But Olympiakos are undefeated this season, this uh, this year, excuse me. They have won 10 out of 16 games across all competition since their last loss on November 3 against Nantes. They haven't lost, and they haven't lost in the league since Pauk on October October 17. It doesn't look great. It's not perfect. This is not the best Olympiakos we've seen in a long time. But you know what? This is progress. This is progress so far. Very interested to see what happens next. Good summary, Costa. Very good <laughs> yes, summary. A 10-minute summary. That's good. Yeah. The people, people in the chat, they're kind of, I don't know if you're, you're, you're feeding off some of the energy tonight, but like everyone seems to be like, let's enjoy this one just tonight. Yeah. You know, yeah. so many guys, problems. guys, no, 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 I'm no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, guys. You need, yeah, to, no, 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 I'm with you. You I'm need with to you. be clear. You need to be clear when you're saying the name Costas. Is it Costas with a K? Is it Costas with a C? He's Levoyanis Amlianos. He's sexy. I am good looking. Please be clear Jesus what Christ. you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Dilf. I am the good looking one. God, Jesus, whatever. Christ. <laughs> People didn't come for this content today, but but they get it anyway. That's what they get, you know. Like, look at this. Look at this Sterner guy. He says Costara. Who's the Costara? Who? Yes. <laughs> I want the compliment. He wants the compliment, but we also don't want to be prima donnas, <laughs> guys. Seriously, I know it's late. I know it's been. We're it's still midweek. We're all looking forward to the weekend, but God damn it, Ella, Ella. Even God. even when you write it in Greek, you can put a C and then put the omega. And yeah. at least that way I know it's me. But anyway, no, I'm not. I'm asking too much of the Jesus Greek folks. <laughs> Libon, let's let's have a look at the comments. So um, <coughs> we are going to open. I, I do want to open the lines tonight as well. So we're going to be dropping the link into the chat throughout today. So if you want to come on tonight's the night. We're in a good mood. We're going to open the lines. If one of you can do that while i'm looking through the comments drop the link the link to join the podcast if you want to come on talk to us turn your camera on come and have a chat um and i like of course can i cut you off i like when people yeah. come on and have opposing views to us because sometimes it feels like a bit of a chamber like we're on twitter but we message each other we see other fans comments but we don't talk i guess like other than journalists and yeah, social media. So talking face to face with other fans, it kind of brings perspectives we may not be talking about that you see or that you want to discuss. So, or journalists aren't talking about in Greece as well. So happy to talk about it with you guys. So. Yes, indeed. join tonight. Join tonight. I'm going to read some of the comments. And what have we got here? Manos, I lost the video. Before the penalty save, which Manos says wasn't a penalty. <coughs> <laughs> You okay, what, what, you okay, Costa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. Might, I might be coming down with something. Well, gala. Okay. <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I, I said that Dolagis deserved to have a massive save like this based on his whole game performance. Valbuena was also hearts and eyes. That's all. Um, right. In our chat as well, I said at half time, I said at half time, the boys become a man. I said, I, I, and I tweeted it as well. I took the risk. I was like, the boy's become a man. And I didn't just see it tonight. There were other games this season where he played and he had that confidence that you talked about, Labro, like mm. that coming off his line. Like tonight, you saw some of the replays where he's come off his line and he's screaming at the defenders. He's like, it's my ball. Like, you know, he's, and I don't know if it's his, um, his breakout game, but like, I do think like, oh, you know, all young players, like keepers in particular, they have this this one game that's like a reference point for them. And maybe this is the one yeah. for him. Uh, I, I do <laughs> think that they need to manage him properly. My my immediate kind of Greek reaction after the game is, oh, play him, play him now, you know, like all the games. But yeah, need to... 
need to use the brain. Like they need to manage him properly. Uh, yeah. I I said earlier on in the season that I thought we needed to loan him out because I was disappointed he wasn't getting game time, and maybe he maybe I thought he would be disappointed too. But clearly, like all the things that we've been hearing about this boy or this this lad, you see it. Like he 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 obviously works hard. Like we know he's a like a good student athlete. Like he's finished his studies too, did well. Um, and you saw you saw the love and the, the the affection that his teammates gave him at the end of the game too. Yeah. And another thing, Costa. Remember the Jolebas interview that we did? I was there. Yeah, you were there. <laughs> Remember what he said when we asked him who is the most underrated player that he's he's been on a roster with? Mm-hmm. Who he said. And you and I were both quite shocked. Mm. But Dolakis, mm. the young... I was just listening to it now again. I wanted to hear what he said. He said, the young boy. He called him like the young boy. Mm-hmm. And he was very, he was very much a boy when uh, he uh, when he when Holebas yeah. returned. Yeah. seventeen, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I think he just turned twenty recently. I think I could be wrong. Yeah, he's twenty years old. Uh, I, I I do want to say though about the penalty. I thought it was quite a soft one. I mean, I've seen those kind of penalties not being awarded in the Premier League, which in the Premier League it's so common for defenders. And, and strikers to just wrestle over the ball. I think it was a bit soft, but since he gave, he awarded the penalty, he had to show the red card because he was in an obvious position to score and he was the last man there. But Incredible. they changed the rule on that, didn't they? That you, like, it's sure. like, they like if you're, they don't want double jeopardy, right? They don't want to give a penalty and a red card, so they changed it. Like, you only get a red card if you were completely not playing the ball. Like, your your tackle was kind of like i'm just gonna tackle the guy and take him down you know mm. and i didn't know i didn't think it rose to that you know where it was like straight red card but that's very interesting uh but as for zolaikis in general uh i am very pleased for his performance now it's important to create a consistency because it's one thing to have an incredible performance in one game it's another thing to be consistent i insist on pascal like remaining the number one and I've said it in the show before, and I got to say, like, this is going to be an unpopular view. So just a few minutes after this incredible performance by Jolaikis. But if, knock on wood, touch wood, Pascalakis cannot continue playing as the number one, hopefully it doesn't happen, I would still go for Vatslik if he stays for Olympiakos because uh, he's more experienced, because he's more experienced at top level and the big matches, because Olympiakos are said to, like I've said it so many times, this is going to be the toughest playoffs in Greek football history, there's going to be eight derbies within the space of one month. And it's one thing to play very well against Aris in one game. It's another thing to be consistent against such a, such a powerful like, such a strong Pauk and such a, well, uh, a tough Panathinaikos side. And to be honest, like this was a cup game. It's different. There's a difference with a league game because if that was a league game, um, Zolakis would have had to save this penalty if it meant he died, whereas a cup game at, under these circumstances, that would take the game to extra time. So there would still be life after this game. It's not the end of the world. Anyway, incredible goalkeeper, Olympiakos, uh, need to start working into transforming him into the number one come this summer, in my opinion. But this season is a bit different. It's a bit tough. But come this summer, this player, this goalkeeper needs to start to de- start to develop as an imminent number one, a number one in the making. Megal my Gouverde. opinion. <clears throat> Megal yeah. I but insist on it, though. But, but like, don't you see what I mean, though? Don't you guys see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <clears throat> but I wonder what the role of Pascal Lekis is in the development of uh, Zolakis, because Pascal Lekis is erratic, let's say. He's known. Yeah. Mm. But, like, no one will ever say he's <gasps> not yelling and out front and emitting confidence. I think that's, like, his best traits as well with his size and jumping and athleticism. So I wonder if working with a Greek keeper who's been an international, I, I have my opinions about the player from his days with Pauk, but it, it, if you're going to learn to be vocal and athletic and a leader, I feel like, <laughs> like he's, you know. Yeah. He, uh, you just, a very, just, just, a, just a very quick one from our dear friend, Aris Bouloubasis, uh, about the red card. 
uh, that's not UEFA rules for the red cards. There's no double jeopardy in Europe. They only do that in the US. Okay, there we go. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, what, maybe it is from the US that I learned this idea of like, you can't, like you give a penalty away and they don't want to send you off as well. I, I thought it was UEFA as well. I don't know. Anyway, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know about the red card, but when you're a defender and you start putting your arms around <laughs> an attacker in the box like that, you give the referee the opportunity to give a penalty. And I've seen those given before and I've seen those not given. It was given and Jolagi saved it and that's the history and, and that's all we that's all that matters today, I guess. I saw I saw some some folks like like making a real point out of this after the game that it was uh you know it was it was crazy that they gave the penalty and yada 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 but I don't it that does it like that's not really the focus at all for me today. Like was it was it not a penalty? Um in any case, let's have a look at some more comments. Some good ones today. Clapatas, Kla, you're back. Uh, my friend says I started my spring semester in college today. When Zolagi saved the pen, I was trying my best not to scream. Bama de Malaga inside a full but silent classroom. Galia <laughs> uh, uh, you should you should scream next time. Those are great stories you can tell your kids later on in life. How you screamed in a in a in a schoolroom. Labro, don't you have like a similar one about I have, Mit Mitroglu? I have one with Mitroglu uh, against Atletico Madrid, the third goal. I'll never forget that. No, I also have you? another one in the library at university, the, the Fortunis penalty versus Milan. That was another one. Shout out to Fivos. We were in the quiet room in the library and just lost it. It was words were said about Italian people that cannot be repeated. Incredible, incredible nights that was. So, yeah. Let it out. That's what I recommend. I, I got some other stories, but I'll save them for another time. Yeah. Uh, ben, ben De Rosia says, Jolaga showed his class tonight, future Greek number one. Fiscado seven, honest effort by Jolakis. Papasathopoulos, Doi, Rodinei, Vrusai, Samaseku, Biel, Valbuena, Pies, Masura, Sorry, Yorgos, Rodriguez out, says uh, Fiscardo. Uh, look at my eyes, DC. Also, more praise for Zolakis. We witnessed Zolakis' best game so far with it us. It was better than the Greek Cup final he played in 2020. Much nere, better. Nere, Much nere, better. Nere. For sure, for sure. There was a, I, I remember that cup final. There, there was a ball that kind of went through his legs and then he managed to stop it somehow. And <laughs> it was one of those um, nervy encounters, but he came out of it. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, Andreas Mitis, welcome back, my friend. Semi-finals of the cup coming up sooner than usual, 7 to 9th of Feb. 28 to 22 of March. I think, Costa, you mentioned that too. Five games in total coming up between Icon Olympiacos at the two best football stadiums in Greece. Definitely, ma'am. Like, very much looking forward to those those games. Another one, Fiscardo says, Mitchell did the right thing to use Zolagis from the moment that they gave him the cup. And I think there was another comment. I can't remember who it was. Um... <laughs> Dimitri says we love Grumpy Labro. Someone needs to give the tough love. We can relate. Please don't change. There you go. Yeah. Conflicting go. info. I don't know what to do. The the grumpiness I don't think will change. Um yeah. from the performance. Um, it's just the result. We try to Costa, this it. one's for you. It says in Costa with a K, we trust. What's uh, up, G? That, yes, thank you very much. Is is that is that your girlfriend or like is that your brother <laughs> or like someone? <laughs> I don't have a brother, so joke's on you, my friend. <laughs> I know it, like I know. I got, I got, I got to hit back. I got to, yeah. I, I got to hit back. Yeah. I got to be, yeah. I got to be, I got to sass back. Give me more. Give me more. <laughs> oh, well, there is more. There is more. It's... You just wait. You just wait, sir. Um, Costas versus Costas. I love that. That's a good one. It looks like my my name's my name looks Russian there. Actually, it's yeah, like it would be Sostas. Oh, and like is Ravalas, I hate to disappoint you on this one, but you're wrong on this one as well. I'm afraid. Let's Not go. 
And then some more serious comments. If theme is yes, if theme says the only positive thing tonight was Zolagi's performance along with the qualification to the semi-finals. But let's keep <laughs> this exactly, yeah. Let's keep this for tonight. Um, what else we got? Valden a Gales over Villas que meta Takis says Mano. Uh, uh, okay, more serious question. Giovanni Maria Segoloni says, who do you honestly think is the favourite to win the league at the moment? Uh, I'll, give a, I'll, I'll give a quick answer to that one. I don't want to talk about that one tonight, to be honest. Um, I think favourites Ajax for, yeah, the, for, yeah. the, for the league based on form right now. Yeah. Uh, but I also think it's going to be tight in the playoffs. Uh, guys? To be honest, uh, like it's going to be an absolute failure if Olympiacos. It's going to be a failure if Olympiacos. When Olympiacos don't win the league, it's a failure, all right? But if they don't finish second, it's going to be an absolute failure. Uh, if Olympiacos, though, fail to, uh, to make it to the Champions League or the Europa League next season, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. The 2024 final will be at the Opapa Arena. The 2024 Conference League final will be at the Opapa Arena. So I would expect and I would advise Olympiacos to do some heavy and serious investing in the team because the conference should be something Olympiacos should push for something way, way more than just knockout, the knockout phase. Just a thought out there. That's an interesting shout. I like that. Labro, what you got? Yeah, I, um, <laughs> I'm i between Pauk and Ike, to be honest. I... Uh... They're just a bit inconsistent as well. I think they're both starting to play really well, but I, I just because of the point advantage, I would say Ike, but both of them, just like Olympiacos can drop points like this. So I, I would say Ike. I think the biggest thing is it seems like they can't lose in the new stadium and in the playoffs. I think that's going to come back and, and help them. Like, I don't think they have lost or even dropped points there. So, I don't know. I think I think that's the key, I, and I I think they're the favorites because of that. But yeah, we'll see. Okay. I think Ike are going like Ike are the favorites. But the thing is, Olympiacos, yes, still they're not perfect. They're not as good as they were in other dominant seasons. But they are nothing like what they were in the first round. Uh, I don't I don't expect the the, the rivals to underestimate Olympiacos, but. They need to understand when they face Olympiacos, it's going to be nothing like what they got in the first round. Like I said, only less than two weeks ago, we were wondering, can Olympiacos even win a big game? They've won three in a row right now. Did they do it kicking and screaming in most of them, if not all of them? Yes, they did. But it's one thing to entertain. It's another thing to get the result. So, yeah, I got the favorites in my opinion. But from then on, you know, the difference is not that big. And by the time the playoffs arrive, this – we can keep seeing teams going up and down, up and down. The the top is going to be something crazy. There's going to be a crazy roller coaster situation. You know, anything can happen then. I think it could be a bit of a raffle after that. I, I also think uh, I also think tonight was so important because if you look back, is this the first big away game that Olympiacos has won? I asked that question. Me and Marcial talked about it. Coming into the second half of the season, we lost. What's the question? We dropped points with Atromitos. We dropped points with Pasianina, which were the two we hard won. away games. I think we this is the won. first, the first hard won. away game. Yeah, we haven't won a big away game. Like yeah. Aris at home was the first big game we won this season. I yeah. was at home yeah. one nil, and this exactly. is the first one away. Yeah, yeah. And That's and right. Ophi's in. I know. Uh, like, look at me. I never thought I'd say Ophi's in good form, but yeah, Ophi's in decent are. form, I guess. I was reading. They beat Asteras. They drew with Pauk. They destroyed Panatolikos. Yep. Like, let's see what they've got. They're always a team that shows up in the second half of the season, I feel. Um, so it's it's not going to be easy. Um, and as Costa said, when you look at the schedule, it goes like this. It's like the an easy game with Ophi. Easy, like... Yeah. And then you got Ike Pauk, two easy games, and then it's like Ike Pauk again, or like Ike Panathinaik or something like that. So it, it, it's going to be difficult these next few weeks. This is this is where the season, I think, could be won or lost. Like not the playoffs. I think Saturday or the the game February fourth with Pauk, the game in the league with Ike, and the game in the league with Panathinaikos. So. 
And also the cup is going to be so hard. The first game is also on my birthday, February 7th. So I wish I was in Europe so I could fly and go to the game. But Do oh we my know God, if Olympiacos lose, if Olympiacos lose, we're never going to hear the end of it. We need to have a show if Olympiacos lose. We need to have a show. We need, but do we and we know, need do Labros. We're going to have a show, show anyway, whether we, we always have a show. No, no but do we, we need Labros. We need Labros in the show if we lose. Yeah, I miss the stadium as well. I don't know about you guys. It's been like uh, months. It's been long. I miss, yeah, I miss. I miss going to the stadium. So yeah. Um, what did I want to say? Right. Uh, there wasn't more, more comments coming in, but still people haven't been, and nobody's clicked the link. Nobody wants to come and talk to us. Why are people shy? Yeah, come, come on, guys. guys. Come on, guys. Look at my eyes, DC. Michel, who's in the comments. Uh, Lakis Gavalas, come on. The, Whoever this you is are, the moment. get on here. This is, this is yeah, guys, you don't have to put the video on either. You can just have your voice. So, If you're, yeah, if you're, if you don't want to turn your camera on, if you do, that's great. We actually and get to see you guys. And if you're a Greek speaker, that's okay as well. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, we can do as that. Always. Yeah. I mean, just can come you... on, come on, just come on, come on along with us, and just tell us if you think Olympiacos can win the league and why, basically. Just whatever you want to talk about, what yeah. the whatever, whatever you guys want to talk about. There we go. The links in the chat one more time. Also, just uh, to say, it's either this or Panos Kiamos Buzukia. So. You know, I gotta. I prefer in the stadium. You know, I, I don't know personally. I'm I'm too I'm too cheap for the the high end. You know, Aguiros and whatnot. <laughs> I go with. Banos Banos is, Banos is he expensive? Is, no, I mean, come who's on, expensive now? I I Kosas with a K. You're a big fan of Buzukia. A K. Well, probably I haven't never been. To been. A I haven't been to Buzuki since 2010, my friend. Shit, we need to get an expert on the ground, Martial Dubo. And he can tell us what the expensive bazooka is these days. I don't know. That would be a that would be a good Gate Seven International vlog taking Could Marshall to the bazooka for the first time. That would be amazing. Jesus Christ! Okay. Marshall <laughs> defraud. Marshall defraud. I got a yeah. I got a question for you, the Marshall? panel and the comment section. Hello. Uh, did we see anything from Ramon? He came on on the eighty sixth minute, so nothing much. But did we see anything we liked? Anything we didn't like? He's rapid. Yeah. He's, he's rapid. He he's looks fast. Man. He looks like uh, the people who do CrossFit. I do CrossFit with the so like he's gonna okay, do like we a. Get it, Labro. You're doing CrossFit. It's amazing. Yeah, no big deal, Please. guys. Like, I don't know. Give it a rest. <laughs> big deal. First rule of CrossFit: talk about doing CrossFit. Uh, he played that. seven minutes, man. Like, I didn't really see him get on the ball. He like ran honest. into someone though, and they went flying. Like he kicked the ball and just yeah. ran into him, and the the guy like was like dead. So. Let's see. Yeah, he looks like he's done like a lot of running in the favelas, man. Like the the, the guy looks built and he looks very fast. Like, <laughs> like the, the 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 turn of the turn of pace, just like the acceleration, it looked quite. <gasps> I hadn't you know haven't seen that for for a while. And like Oleg, Oleg is quite like he's not slow. Like he's, he's quite, quite fast, huh? And, and Oleg's quite built too. But like the guy, he did look he did look lean, like very kind of. Like muscle and like I'm coming for you, but it's very early, yeah, very, it's very early. early. But he looked but, aggressive too, you know, like yeah. boom, just running out of the block. So let's see. I yeah. do you guys want to see him play Ofi this Sunday? I assume Michel's gonna play Oleg be because back. we have Pauk next week, so he probably wants to ready him. I don't know. I don't know. It's a bit strange that he left him out of the squad. I've heard the, I've heard rumors that he's injured. But uh, like with the ongoing transfer rumor that's going on, it's a bit strange because that was a big game, guys. That was a huge. That's the kind of game that could have seen Olympiacos being thrown out. Aris were very much up for it after what happened at Atromitos. So it's a bit strange what's going on there. I don't know. <laughs> somebody, somebody is trolling us again, Costa. It's like Costa Galata les que si que si Costa de Nixa de Gof Costa. If, if, if that's how trolling is going to be from now on, then I'm all for it. Hello, uh, Olympiacos Worldwide. Thank you for the comment, buddy. Thanks for watching. I don't know if that's a new subscriber. Uh, if it is, like, welcome. Galasoris is Philip Karastumi. Get the sub. Welcome aboard, man. Uh, again, guys, um, shameless call. If you like what you're listening to, if you like what you're watching, give us a like. Uh, lots of content on our channel, interviews, vlogs, more coming, player interviews. The works hit the like button, help to get 
our channel out to more Libyakos fans around the world. Grow the community. Subscribe. Help us get to 3,000 subscribers. Fantastic work. Um, all right. Do we want to be... A, a, we, we've been super positive like all this time throughout yeah, the episode so yeah. far. Should, yeah, should, should, we, uh, should we give some pain? Should we the old man. Right, let's go. Okay, jump in. Well, that, that should be a segment of our lives now. It's like there should be a segment whenever it gets too positive, grumpy old man exactly. mode. Whenever I that would be. So, like, okay, like, that's smash this. Okay, no, that um, do, do you want to be grumpy old man? Let me, let's, I, I want to, before I hand over to you, yeah, the lineup today, yeah. So, yeah, let me look at no it. in Bom Juan, no mm. in Bom Juan in midfield, no Ole Grebchuk at the back, otherwise unchanged. Mario Brusai comes in at left back. Didier Samaseku gets gets a starting role next to Jan and Villa. Mathieu Valbuena comes in. Yeah, Pep, Biel, Pep Biel stays in the lineup. And Yorgos Masura starts on the left. And Cedric Bakambu keeps his place up front. What did you see today? I'll start by saying um, I was surprised by the lineup. I'm surprised Valbuena got... I, I don't know when was the last time Valbuena started a game. Um, Europe. It's been... It's been a while. Um, so I was surprised that in such a key game he started Valbuena, but I guess what he wanted was someone to be able to hold the ball up and win fouls. I've always thought that's one of Valbuena's best features, like even for being his, his stature. Um, I, I thought that's what he wanted. Personally, Vrusai, I'm, I thought he was okay today, but I I, I would prefer Andrutsos at left back. Insanity, I know. Um and then, yeah, I think that the team picked itself. I think Samaseku was good tonight. He's super fit. He can play 90 minutes easily. He runs. His pass is good. But in a midfield partnership with Mvia, I'm starting to wonder whether they can play together. Maybe Huang between them unlocks them a bit. But they feel a bit too similar type of player. You know, almost like two sixes type, type thing. Like... I remember there was a period, and I, I don't want to compare the two, but like when Mvia played with Pujalakis, where they almost were in the same space and were trying to do the same thing. I I don't know if Samaseku is a box-to-box, you know? I don't know if his passing or his shooting is box-to-box. And I think you and Adi were talking about in the chat how he's similar to that to a Madi Kamara role, like that idea but like he doesn't have that vision that pass creativity and the final touch so i don't know i i thought it was a good idea i don't know what he's gonna do i i just like seeing him play because he's a player with a lot of class and then finally i'll i'll, I'll end up looking at the final at my my look at the lineup because i am looking at now masuras on the right wing or left wing what was it left wing uh with with rusai Yorgos Masuras, like, good on him. He tries, but Olympiakos needs a real winger. I I think two weeks ago I was saying, like, okay, Michel wants to go with these tens, just play through the midfield, go with the, what is it, the Christmas tree formation, whatever, four two three one three tens. I've changed my mind. I think we need, like, a real winger pretty badly. I don't know who they're going to go after. Um Two wingers, probably. It would make sense. They got rid of De La... F- Actually, De La Fuente is still here, I read. He's still training, but I think he's finished. But you need to replace De La Fuente and Bowler. So, anyway. I, ju- I just think we need wingers bad. Gary Rodriguez never did it for me, to be honest. I, I just do not like Gary Rodriguez very much. And that's my negative, grumpy shout. I don't think they're going to go for a winger, though. I mean, the way they bailed on the whole Mancini situation, who's now, who now signed for Panathinaikos. They dodged a massive bullet. I honestly, no, no, like, no, no, I agree on that. People trolling Olympiacos fans about Mancini, but it's like, Mancini. No, no, man. I agree with you. Even I agree Panathinaikos with you. fans have to be like, Mancini, are you serious? Labro, I agree with you, but the I fact know, that they didn't go for him, it makes me think that maybe Olympiacos are not going to go for a winger. At all. I mean, it's six days left, almost less than a week left on the on the transfer. And I agree, Olympiacos need to bring a winger. In terms of the whole number three, uh, number three, number tens, and we had a little question about it not too long ago about whether uh, they should drop someone, whether they should bring a winger. I think it predominantly depends on the match, on the kind of opponent 
you have to play like we agree don't do that at Tuba. don't you dare play three or those three number tens at Tuba. I, I still find it really sad that Yadier Samaseku hasn't been uh put as a regular hasn't been uh established as a regular starter at Olympiacos it's going to be uh, it's really sad that this guy has come on loan and he's definitely leaving on the summer unless Olympiacos splash 15 million euros for him uh, and Olympiacos barely have barely used him uh really th that part has been really sad and really baffling just like with Josh Bowler I would have much preferred if uh, Joros Masuras or Gary Rodriguez went out on loan for example and Josh Bowler stayed around for it. Uh, I, I believe he was the best winger out of all of them. Based on what we've seen on the pitch, he was the guy with the most explosiveness, the best movement, the best dribbling skills. I believe they could have used him um, more than anyone else. Yeah, I agree. Olympiacos need a winger more than they would need a center back because uh, the pairing with Socrates and Doi is not perfect, but it's not terrible at the same time. I would much prefer a winger. Yeah. And we got a we got a we got a visitor, don't we? We do, we do. Before, before I bring him on, the Mancini thing, like, I've seen the, 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 the trolling as well. It's like, here's what I think. SDNA wrote, like, Mancini says no to Olympiacos, only wants Panathinaikos. And it's like, fucking good on him. Like, no, who wants Mancini? Like, who, who watches Mancini and is like, this is the winger we need? Like, you know, are, are he's, you serious? Like, he's a, he's a, good super league player to exactly use a, to exactly. use a football manager term like he's a good super league player but does Olympiacos need a good super league player how many times we no we now? need a good Olympiacos archetype winger yeah. i'm not asking for a georgievic <gasps> Maybe I'm asking a lot to like you can't. It's not easy to find the Galetti <coughs> or a, a Miralas, the first thing or a Pedence. Of course, but that's the kind of profile Olympiacos fans want. I don't want a Mancini. I'm sorry, and it's no disrespect to the player, but Mancini probably like let let for argument's sake. Let's say Olympiacos did put a bid in, and Mancini rejected to come to Olympiacos because he knew he's not going to play. Because he'd be six, he'd be a six-month player. He could have a role in the team now, until the end of the season. See what happens, and then in the summer we'd be looking for another winger again because we'd be like, yeah, you know, he was just a band-aid transfer. I've, you know, we've had enough with band-aid transfers. If they find someone good, go and get him. Go and get him. Mancini's a band-aid transfer. Meyadu mejaradu, like go to Panathinaikos, go, my friends. Like Just, I'm not, and he may be fantastic for them, yeah. and that's fine. That's fine because at Olympiacos we have certain needs that are different than what Panathinaikos needs. We're at a different point than Panathinaikos. I think that's fair to say. Like we play in Europe consistently, <gasps> etc. Whatever, and that's not like a shot at them or saying blah blah blah. We also have different financial. I guess situation. Shout out Alafusos and Sky News. Uh, actually, shout fuck out no, Sky. not shout out Sky News. Shout that place Sky. sucks. You know, what? actually, why did I shout out Survivor? Isn't that on Sky? I don't know. Do, like, shut up. Delete this <laughs> section shout out tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna Alphuzos edit this out whatever, tomorrow. Trashing all the people on Survivor. Anyway. Please. Oh my god. <laughs> all right, um, this Ari. Uh, I don't know if you're available. Get your ass on here. Uh, Ari, our co-host, he says, we get DMs, we get direct messages every day, people asking us how they can get in live, and when we drop a link, everyone is too bloody shy to come on. But but we do have someone who is going to join Not us. Shy. You're going to break the duck tonight. Yorgos from London, if I remember well. You're on mute, my friend. Don't forget to unmute yourself. What's up, Jorgo? Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Hello, I lost them. Happy New Year, mate. Long time no yeah, see. Happy New Year. Again. I haven't been on the show for like a few months. I think last time was probably after the Final Night Close game. I don't remember. It's been a long time. But yeah, Happy New Year, guys. I hope everyone's doing well. Happy New Year. Um, well. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to come on. Obviously, no one came on. I was like, all right, I might as well come on. Um, haven't come on for a while. And, I mean, I, I don't really want to talk about today's game because, I mean, I think we should just be happy about it. I think 
we did get lucky with the penalty in the end that um, it was a poor penalty and uh, Jalaki did make a good save. Um, I mean, to be fair, I only watched the first half. Second half, I went off. I had to go do something. I just remember like constantly checking on my phone, checking on my phone for the score because I just had that bad feeling that they were going to score and take it to extra time and have like a Falk last year repeat or something. But yeah, I mean, I just, I think the only thing we should take from today's game, in my opinion, is we have, we have some talents in the team. Um, I think we've already seen Doi. And I think, first of all, I don't know why he's, the national team still haven't managed to get him to play for the Greek national team. I don't know if it's his choice now. I don't know what's happening, but he can be a top centre back. A um, question, a question. Sorry to interrupt you, Yoro, yeah. but I don't think uh, Greece has played uh, for for quite a long time since Doi broke no, into no, the no. picture. I know, but shouldn't because I was checking transfer market. I mean, last uh, week he still um, think he listed on the uh, the Albanian national team, and I would imagine that by now something would have happened. Anyways, I mean, when do we play? March for the qualifiers, yeah. right? Oh, th it's funny you say that. Um, the game we play in Paris, I bought tickets. I'm going to be there, hopefully, fingers crossed, in Paris. But I'm sitting in the French section. So, uh, Guys, oh. sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, Doi will be available for selection in March. So it's it's done. Like He, he will, he will be, be available okay, okay. for Greece. Yeah, he yeah. will be available for Greece, yes. It was, it was reported... Um... November. It was reported when he kind of started breaking into the scene, actually. So apparently, he apparently he's made the choice. He's made the choice like he wants to play for Greece. Yeah, I think so. He's open to being selected. And yeah. there's Aris, our friend Aris. Yeah. Why is it? Why, why does he have a no six there? Very good question there. If you, if you can answer that later because on, because he was Maybe the midfielder he... number six, you know. Was he a six or did he make the account in 06? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, he made the account in 06. <laughs> <laughs> also. <laughs> I'm going to make this request on here. Freaking Doi, I, I think he's born and raised in Greece, so easier case. I have been waiting over a year for my Greek citizenship. Can <laughs> someone help me? Is there someone well-connected that can help me? Uh, Please, it's, God. It's I'm begging awful. now. I, I mean, I live in London, right? And I yeah. could tell you how bad the embassy is in London. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. they, it, they, we, I mean, the embassy is in London, but they decide to work with Greek times. So they open, they're open from like on a, on a Thursday, for example, they'll be open from 10 till 12. And then they're like, yep, yeah, that's, the, that's the day done. So it's, it's awful. I can, I can no, I, 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 I'm going to tell my story here because this is what people want to hear. This is the content they want. I went to four different consulates because I'm from Hawaii originally. And you need to register your parents' marriage and your birth certificate. But I was married. I was, I wasn't married. I was born in Seattle. So they told me you have to register your birth certificate in the San Francisco consulate. But then you have to fly to Los Angeles and register your parents' marriage in the Los Angeles consulate. I went to the D.C. consulate and said, I have all the paperwork here and the translations. Can you just do it? And the guy looks at me and said, it's out of my jurisdiction. So finally, I moved to Switzerland. I bring all the paperwork. And uh, the consulate there says to me, you have all the paperwork. Why didn't you just submit the, the application? Yeah. And so he submits it this over a year ago. And he says, oh, in a few months, you're going to be a, a Greek citizen. I said, God bless you. I need that because I have a job in Europe and I need the citizenship. And here we are over a year later, my application, I called the office, Ithayenia, Athenon, oh, whatever. And they told me basically to go fuck myself. They haven't started anything. So if anyone works there, you know. Prayers up, you know, prayers up, <laughs> using my platform as an influencer. Oh, my you know. God. Please yeah. do help Labro. So, Go, Please Jorho, we, uh, anyway. I interrupted you uh, about the, the, those yeah, issues. You um, said Olympiacos have a lot of stars. Yeah, I just that's that's the thing I wanted to point out because, <laughs> I mean, something that, um, as as being Greek myself, that I've seen in, 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 a Greek, in Greek football, I mean, I remember seeing like a stat a few weeks ago that from all the leagues, in in the whole of Europe, we have one of the worst. Um, oh, excuse me. We have one of the worst um, actual like national like Greek players playing in our league. I mean, I think yeah. the average um, foreign players in all of the top um, six or all of the uh, teams in the top division was nine point something. So nine players in the starting eleven of all the teams in the Super League are foreign foreigners. They're not Greek, mm -hmm. which is crazy because. It's not like we're some, because yes, obviously we're not in the top. I would say, and at, at this point, we're not in the top ten. I mean, it's a joke. 
I mean, we've become a joke, but in a, a top of 10 leagues in Europe, but we are a football in the a footballing country. We do have talent. But I mean, that's like, that's something I, I always get happy. Excuse me. Uh, but that's what I wanted to say. With Jolakis today, I've, I've always, I've always backed Jolakis for at least since, I mean, since he came onto the scene, because I, you could see he has talent. He has talent, but something we, I think, I think um, Labros mentioned it as well. Something we've been really poor at is developing new talent. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Labro make a point about um, how you were? You said you were a bit worried that we might um, over, like we might burn out of uh, Doi, for example. You yeah. did make a point about that. that. That's my main uh, worry with Doi. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with that. Because we saw that with Aikibu last year. Yeah. We did see that. And that's what that's what I'm worried about. In the beginning of the season, I did want to see Zolakis go on loan. I think he really needed that game time. Um, I mean, it was a whole mess. I mean, this season has been a whole mess. And then we got Pasalakis in. Then Vatslik is going to leave. And no one knows what's happening, right? But, I mean, today, I think the most important thing we should take out from today is that we have a future number one sitting there waiting for us. But we just we have to develop him, right? Because I think he can be not only our number one, but he can be Greece's number one. And yeah, I mean that was my main point for today. And then I also wanted to ask you, um, after like, if you guys have anything to ask me about. And then I wanted to ask you about what, because the next five games, I think, if I um, if I'm not correct, are very vital. And I think we'll kind of decide the season because we have the cup ties, and then we have two big games as well. So I think that's that's what I wanted to move on to next. Well, it's going to be a very, uh, a very. We, we, we cover. We, we did say it's going to be a very difficult schedule. Uh, just a very quick one. When we uh, made that joke about Sky, we didn't mean Sky Sports. S K Y. We meant Sky Greece. S K A I. Good clarification, Costa, because you are in the UK. Very important. Yeah. Very important clarification right yes. there. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, Jorgo, you're absolutely right. Uh, I did mention that when I when Olympiakos went through, I had a look at the schedule and uh, I did have a bit, I did have uh, some goosebumps. Olympiakos are facing the next five games you mentioned: Ofi at Karaiskaki, Pau Katuba, Aik at Opap for at Opap Arena for the Greek Cup, Panetolikos at home, Lamia away. Five very important games, especially in the league. Uh, and then you got Panathinaikos at the Karaiskaki and Aik in a deciding cup semi-final. At least I imagine it, because Olympiacos would be happy with a with a draw at the Opaparina, as they usually uh, do. Uh, I feel like the whole essence of enjoying this win is that it's important for Olympiacos not to think too far ahead, in the sense of uh, just concentrate on the next match at hand. Jurgen Klopp said that uh, not too long ago that if you keep thinking about what's ahead instead of what's in front of you, that could spell disaster. Especially this season, so Olympiacos needs to think this way. They need to just think on what's ahead. The next game is against Office. So just concentrate on that. Don't just start. To, don't make. Don't overcomplicate it. Especially if you consider that, uh, even though you haven't lost this year, even though you haven't lost at all since November, if I remember correctly, then don't. Um, uh, and you haven't. You haven't lost all year. You haven't lost since November, but you're still not as consistent as you would want in terms of winning streaks. Then just concentrate on the game at hand, and, and I think that's the kind of uh, uh, tactic Olympiacos have adopted. Okay. Also, I see that I want to see bring up this comment. This is so funny. That that's hilarious. That, that's a, it's funny. I'll read it. It's funny that most of the people here are Greeks making a living abroad, and they complain about foreigners making a living in Greece. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Sorry, like this. I don't get it. I don't think I understand. It's funny it, that most. Of the people here are Greeks. We're here. What's here? Here in the podcast, let's say the the fall. Okay, it's making a living a with the foreign players. It, it's a comment about the foreign players. I think personally, what? I don't have a huge. I've always never been the guy who's like, oh, Greek players have to play because to me, Olympiakos is a European club. But it, it like what Aris did today. Did you guys see? They didn't have a single Greek player who played the either game i think that's a bit yeah and that's you know the what thing. that's Obviously, a bit too much you know like yeah, i'm not yeah, one yeah. of these people who are like seven greek players need to play and 
blah, blah, blah. The mercenaries go. I'm not like that, but I know some people are, but I, it's not my No, idea. no, that's, that, that, that wasn't my point as well. I don't know if um, the guy misunderstood me, but I just said it makes me happy to see Greek players because when we see a Greek player start, it's it's like a it's like a surprise. We, we never see a Greek player yeah. start. It's very rare. That's what I meant. Obviously, you know, we are the biggest club in Greece. We are a mm. European club. And at the end of the day, quality comes first. And if there is a better player, it doesn't matter where he's from. That's that's my point. But I just wanted to say that. So Lakis, for example, and Doi, two young people from Greece, it just it personally makes me happy because I, I can see that we if we develop them right, they can be top players and potentially they can be very successful and they can have a very successful career. But what I wanted to ask you is my final point, then I'll, I'll, I'll leave in case there's someone else in the line. Um, I, I like to ask a lot about what you guys are expecting in the future and like to see what your guys' expectations are. And I was thinking about this today. Would you be happy with a, um, a let's say, a second place finish and a cup tie and, a, and, a, and win the cup, for example? Because personally, in, in this, as we as things stand right now, if we were to win the cup and finish second, personally, I think that would be, I think we could basically, I think we would have made the best out of this season. I I know that you're um that you're a smart kid, and I'll try and give you um like as good an answer as I can on that one. I feel like that's kind of a trick question for an Olympiagos, an Olympiagos fan in the sense that. It almost feels like an Adi Olibiagos thing to say that I'm happy with second place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. we're I, always, I yeah, we're always gonna do everything we can to fight for the title. And yes, we are. I think in. I mean, I'm I'm 36 years old. Wait, let me let, sorry. Let, uh, let me just yeah. say something. I still believe we can win the title. I do. Too. I still. I. I think. I think. Especially with the playoffs. I think if we can just make as as we did. Um. Because, uh, yeah. We. I think. Yeah. When was the last time we lost the game at the Karaiskaki? Was it against? Bauk. Bauk. In, Bauk. in October. In October, if yeah. I remember correctly. I think yeah. if we can just win those big games, in other Karaiskakis, I think. I think we can still win this because when we get, when we get to the playoffs, that's a whole different story. And that's why I think it will be between us and Ike, because I think Falk is a bit too inconsistent, and I just don't see Balakanakos, especially I think now they're just going to drop in form. But I, I still believe we can win the league, but I just wanted to hear what you guys have to say. So my answer is, yeah, I, th I still think we can win the league, but I think that's mainly down to, that, to, to, uh, to a large extent, that's because... I don't think our opponents are consistent enough to do it week in, week out. I think, like, Ike, for me, have, like, they've impressed me in a sense that, like, Almeida's given them an identity. Like, they're a high, high intensity team that plays high up the field. They press, they press their opponents. They, they came to the Gade Skaggy and they played an amazing game. The first half against us, I've never seen a Greek team do that to us, what they did in the Gare Skaggy when we played them in that nil-nil draw. And and Balk as well, for me, they're kind of... They're... Nobody's really... I feel like nobody's really paid much attention to them this season. Everyone's just kind of felt like, ah, uh, you know, Balk, they're kind of going through a bit of a rebuild. Luchescu doesn't really have good players. He still has the veterans around. But, like, I mean, look at... Look at how you know they destroyed Banathamikos in Leoforos in a like a celebratory atmosphere where they had you know Cisse and Berg turning up like for a big game and they shut their house down, mate. It's like three nil, ciao. So, um, and they may do know, it but, again tomorrow night, you know, exactly. So, yeah, the short answer is kind of yeah, I think we can win the title for me. I I'm really I'm looking a bit beyond that because. I don't want a potential, a potential, let's say, like us winning the title, becoming, 
becoming a, a reason to say, ah, oh, we saved the season, everything went well. It doesn't matter what happened last summer, we fixed it. So like, I don't want to like be rewarded. I don't want to reward the people. I have that feeling. It's so, like it would just kind of, you know, calm things down. It's so, like, you know, yeah, calm yeah, down, yeah. guys. Like we won the title, no biggie. It's like, no. I don't exactly. want what yeah. happened last summer. I don't want our last summer to ever be repeated. But, and I know, like, you know, things come in cycles. Well, is doing it for years, like, really good. And then a couple of years, we're not so good. All teams go through cycles. But what we did this summer was just, like, it's criminal. Criminal in football terms. You can't do that again. It's anti-football. It's like... Exactly. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's what I worry about. Childish mistakes. But I mean, it, what? Yeah. Go on. No, go on. Go on. Uh, oh, no, but it no, all go. started, I think, back to it's this mentality sometimes that Olympiacos is like, we want, we need to win the league and the cup at all costs. And that's what like kept us with Martins. It was like, Martins is the one who's going to win us the league. And like, he's the safe bet. He's done it before. And, you know, that, that screwed us. And, I just don't want that to happen. We're going to focus so hard on winning the cup and winning the league that we're going to wake up mid June or July and uh, we're going to be in trouble and we're going to be in trouble. Personally, I, I, I'm a horse. What is this? Anyway, I, uh, it was yeah, only a matter of time point. till it happened here because uh, this is this has been going on on the internet and YouTube a long time. So okay. it was only a matter of time. Anyway, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just worried about the summer more than anything because I think I, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to be that negative guy. You know, I'm always the bad news. Mvs yeah. contract is up. Uh, Hamas's contract is up. Masuras, what are we doing? El Arabi, is he going to be here past the summer? Bakambu, the rumors he was going to leave. There are lots of question marks. There's lots of questions time. going in the summer. Like, you yeah. don't even want to touch the summer. Yeah. But what I will say is I'm more worried. I think Almeida, as a coach, and this attacking philosophy can get him in trouble. And super going all-out attack can, I think, leave him exposed. But he's really good tactically. I think he plays attacking football. The players believe. But I do think that Ike back line is a little... Shaky, shaky let's say mm -hmm. but i do also think we should say lucescu is like everyone hates him but he's a grinder you know like he's hard yeah, to yeah, beat yeah, yeah. it is hard to go to tumba and beat and, and, and beat and beat Pauk, right and now they're they seem to be flying tyson looks like a good good signing but again Pauk is another team where let's not hide the reality they they drop points and lose games very easily as well they've done it all season just like us so it, it's kind of they're kind of in a similar boat as only backwards you know they've been struggling all season but now it's like is this the turning point they're six points behind they're still in it and and to be honest Pauk looks like they put the cards together better than us in my opinion that's my opinion. Well, they're, they're, they're building too because they're running the risks, but they're re reaping the rewards as well. When you play yeah. Kuliaragis at the yeah. back and uh, the other <gasps> young kid, my God, um, Costa uh, Delia's the 10 that they're playing. Like, you know, they, they reap the rewards on, on Sunday against Panathinaikos, but then, you know, if you've got young players playing at the back, they'll make mistakes. And, you know, Doi, Doi made some mistakes today and he'll make more mistakes, but you've got to like trust the process if you trust the players like you play them and you want to develop them that's something that Olympiacos fans for me not good at or Greeks in general man like because we're such fiery like emotional emotional people we can be like super thrilled with something and then five minutes later it's you know doom and gloom mm -hmm. and just like si since we touched on it there is there was a good question from I think that Def Profidiga earlier be honest, guys, are you scared of our centre-back situation? Do you think we need to buy someone? Nobody's talking about this enough. I think we've talked about it here. And whenever they talk about it in in, in the media in, in Greece, it's like, oh, we're not looking at anybody because we've still got Cissé and Bar, And as long as they're still here, like, we've got too many centre-backs. But, like, we, we talked about it on the last bloody podcast, didn't we? We said, like, Socrates is going to get injured at some point. Or, like, he's going to get tired. 
Doi is going to, you know, you can't play a 18, 19 year old kid week in, week out, just, just out <gasps> of nowhere, just out of nowhere. Like we did with Agibu last season. You've got a, like Grigoris Jorgatos talked about that with Timikas. I don't know if you guys, there was an interview Jorgatos did with, um, with uh, the Amadopoulos a while that back. Was three was, years ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. It, it, I remember was, that though, yeah. It was a good podcast though. And I remember what he said about, like Jorgatos was saying about Timikas. He said, um, I think it was Marco Silva played, like he, he used uh, he used Timikas in a league game. I think it was against Larissa. I can't remember. I think it was away from home, but there was a home game before. Anyway, Timikas had a good game. And then the next game, he didn't play and he wasn't even in the squad. They sent him back down to the under-23s. And and Jorgato said the reason we did that is because we wanted to see how he would react, like mentally. Like, would he take it and, you know, go back down and, you know, work his butt off and, like, you know, show that, you know, he, he belongs in the first team. And Timikas put his head down and, you know, the, the rest is history. But you know, sometimes you do. You need to ground those players, like particularly when they're young. You're just throwing them in there and, and making them feel like they're bigger than they are. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what I'm speculating, and then maybe the bit that's what happened to Agibu. Yeah? Out of nowhere, he was treated like Rivaldo, pretty much yeah. like yeah. La- last season. Yeah, and I think that's why Labros's point is very fair that. Um, and I said he's worried that we're going to burn Doi out. Not in that sense, but in the as you said as well, uh, Costa, that um, he can't he, he need he can't get too ahead of himself, you know. And I think the centre back situation, I think it, it is a very serious one because of us. Our is getting too old. Um, I mean, and then what we have Doi, which is again you can't be relying on him. Obviously, you're gonna be starting him, but you need someone next to him like Socrates because I think that's been a very good partnership between the two, the experience and the um, yeah, the, you know the fiery character of Doi, and then you have Cisse, who, you know, the relationship is a whole mess. I mean, last time he played for us, he came off, and the fans were um. They were screaming and swearing at him, and he was swearing back at the fans. And he then... played today, though. He played today. Oh, he did play he today. Scored yeah. against Atromitas, remember? He scored, yeah, he scored yeah. against Atromitas. Yeah. Yeah. He did score against Atromitas, yeah, from the corner. Yeah, my bad. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's frosty think, relationship, let's say. Uh, yeah, I think I think he'll be out in the summer, and it, as well. We won't get money for him now. We won't get money anymore. Yeah. It's, it's like contract is fire. Or no, the, or it's, value it's just they, they, his they, value. They like just, we got a bid. Uh, there's a reported bid from Salernitana. It was like two and a half million, and this is a player that we were getting p- more than ten yeah, million yeah, offers yeah, yeah, a like, couple of seasons ago. League, and pre- there was Premier League interest as well. I remember yeah, a I, lot of I, Premier League interest. I, I think Germany was the biggest one. I think it was Eintracht a couple of years ago, like 14, yeah. 15 million and you know we said no, and now we're crying. Like we're not yeah, not even yeah. getting three or four million for him. So, yeah. like, that's another thing that really bothers me, man. It's like, we don't know when to let go. But, I, okay, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> we're not yeah, going to get into those now. We're yeah, not no, going to no. get into those yeah, topics now. The time. And then I think, yeah, I think that's because I, I obviously I'm thinking about the summer as well. And my last question, and I think it will be something to end off, end of the, the show is because I saw a lot of Olympiacos fans talking about it on Twitter. And I think I think it's a very interesting topic, which, to be honest, I don't really want, I don't want to bring it up because we had this talk only a few months ago. But do you think that Mitchell should stay after the summer? Well, just a few, just a couple of points before I get to this because um, I didn't get the chance to respond to some other things. Um, when it comes to foreign players and Greek players, Yoro, you've said it very well. Obviously. Uh, and the best players will always play at Olympiakos or any, or any other club. It's just that it's a shame we don't see a lot of Greek stars emerging at Olympiakos in the last few years. Uh, the thing about young Greek players, we've said it before, is that there is a bit of a mentality issue. Uh, when young Greek players are, are sent out on loan, um, some of them see it as rejection. They wrongfully see it as rejection, which is very wrong because it, it, what, what they're saying to them is not you're not good enough. They're saying... You're really good and we believe in you, but we can't use you right now. So we want you to go abroad or another team and 
pick some experience who can come back better and hopefully push for a position position in the team. And a lot of young Greek players, unfortunately, don't, don't want to go abroad and they prefer to stay in Greece, which means that they're going to have a loan stint at a club with far less uh, capabilities of improving them uh, because of family is around, their friends are around, their girlfriends are around, the sea is around, the, the sun is around, the, the girls are around, etc. When it comes to the centre-back, uh, like we've said it many times here, the January transfer window is not the kind of window you use to turn a team into, into champions. It's more, of a, it's more of an opportunity to make some tweaks. And the transfer window is almost over in almost a week, so very little time. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see a centre-back coming in with so many other players playing in that position. And when it comes to your previous question, before uh, we go to your current one, uh, like I said, uh, if Olympiacos don't win the league, that's going to be tragic for Olympiacos standards, like GS said here. Uh, but if they finish second, it's going to be ab an absolute disaster for Olympiacos because um, then they're not going to be in the Champions League. Can you imagine Pep Biel wanting to stay at Olympiacos if they don't make it to the Champions League? Can you imagine Imbom Juan wanting to stay? Can you imagine James Rodriguez wanting to stay? Uh, so it's absolutely important that those two positions, uh, Olympiacos, make the top two positions. I'm going to be frank with you guys. Based on what I'm seeing, I don't think Olympiacos are going to win the title. I said it in the pa in the previous podcast show that uh, a champion needs consistency and he needs to show medal. He needs to show a champion's medal. Uh, when your rivals drop points, you need to capitalize on that. We've seen Olympiacos failing to do that more than once. Uh, we've seen Olympiacos not being able to create, struggling to create a, a, a long winning streak, even though they've been undefeated this year and since October, which is huge, but still uh, it's a bit of an issue. And uh, when it comes to Mitzel, I agree with Costa 100%. Uh, if Olympiacos win the title, somehow Mitzel should not stay at Olympiacos. Uh, he's more of a wartime manager, it seems, like a, a, a non-Greek Takis Lemonis, in my, in my opinion. Uh, what happened last summer should not be rewarded. The tactics, the childish mistakes, they, they should not be rewarded. So if Olympiacos lose the league, maybe that will be a, a blessing in disguise. As long as they don't miss out in the top two, that will definitely be a blessing in disguise because that will lead to some uh, professional and much-needed changes, some logical and clear-headed changes. So, yeah, like in my opinion, one of those should be that Mitzel should not be part of the team even if Olympiacos win the title, because next season, like I said, Olympiacos could find themselves in the conference if they if it doesn't work out in the Champions League, if it doesn't work out in the Europa League. Uh, if the, 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 the final will be in Greece, Olympiacos need to fix a strong team no matter what. They cannot, and they can, it, it would also be bad if Olympiacos miss out in the Champions League for, two, for three uh, years in a row. So Olympiacos need to make some good uh, decisions some strong decisions, and one should be Mitchell now no longer being in the dugout. Sorry for taking for so long. No, don't. I, I think also we're going to start wrapping up because we've went past an hour. But I, I agree, Mitchell can't stay after the end of the season. And to be honest, you look, and I know we discussed this a bit uh, last episode, I think if the club would be open to offering him a role, kind of like Karambe, kind of like ambassador-type role, he loves Olympiacos, he knows Olympiacos. Because let's be honest, like, Michel, his coach, last coaching job before Olympiacos, he went to Getafe, played eight games, lost every single game with a goal differential of like <coughs> negative 15. And it had been over a year since he'd even been given an offer to come coach. And that was from us. Like, I think Michel, as a professional manager outside of Olympiacos, I don't think he has big prospects. Maybe. This revitalizes his coaching career like it did the first time. Um, but, like, I don't know if he wants to keep coaching, if he'd be open to this. But I, I think you need to to basically go under the table and find someone from March or April who you bring in. Kind of this happens at the highest level. Agreements made. Watch the team. Whatever happens, you're coming in at the end. And that's how we – and that's how the beautiful cycle of Martins began. Right, yeah. so maybe that's the formula that we go for. But anyway, something kind of like United that last season, I think. I think it would be a, a good um, yeah. thing. How I mean, Ten Hag was already announced uh, way before the end of the season. Exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah. If we can do that, that would be fantastic. But that's quite difficult. But that's I'm fine. sure that's a conversation we're going to come back to definitely yeah. before the end of the season. Um, but Yorgo, thanks very much for coming on, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Yorgo. Thanks. thanks. Yes, yeah, so good night, nice. mate. Take care, pal. Bye, bye, man. Yeah. Uh, big shout out to um, uh, Dimitris eighty four or the Datesera. Thank you so much for the donation, my man. Uh, and he has a nice little message for us. Keep the good work, guys. Thank you for keeping us company and being honest. Man, thank you so much for your kind words. But without you guys, none of this is possible. Uh, without you guys, there is no Gate 7 International. It's all you guys. Thank you so much for the kind words. Thank you so much for the donation. And thank you to everybody for tuning in tonight. That has been awesome, you guys. Also, I, I want to say, Lucky's tonight, man. Like, you're like the me of the comments. You're so negative, man. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Young Greek players are overrated. It's impossible to sell on. No, man, it's okay. We we won tonight. They're not overrated. They're not overrated. No, Mate, but yeah. I, I, that's I, a good. I, it's a good point that that Yorgo raised, and actually, so this is an issue. This week is very topical because Asteras Tripolis of all clubs, they've bought a motion before. I think it, it's the, the federation or at the Super League level where Apple. they want, but they want to discuss. A minimum quota for Greek players in the Greek Super League, and I've put I've put the question in the poll. Actually, um, I'm really curious to get a good sample here. Only 40 of you voted so far. So, would you support a minimum quota for Greek players in the Super League? 85% uh, of you have said yes so far. 15% say no. I think this is I think this is crucial. This is crucial for Greek football. Um, we can't attract the best players. We can't attract the best players, and the, the players that we get from abroad sometimes they're not they're not better, if, or they're not they're not much better than the ones we have already. And I always think you should prioritize domestic talent over over foreign players, but particularly like because nobody that's that good really wants to come to Greece right now. Yeah, uh, and I, I, I have the feeling Dude, that Marcelo it, and James Rodriguez wanted to come, Costa. Yeah. Okay. James not, is not bad. James yeah, is not I, bad. I know, but I mean, just, we never, we never I said know. he was bad. We never no. said he was bad. I just, I'm just clarifying. I, I, I just don't think. I think it's like my half Dutch side that like really loves Dutch football and how they do it, and I'm just like, and then my, I, I it like looks at the Greek side and it's like, why are we doing this, you know? <laughs> like you know, so yeah. it's just like, I love that. I love that. Oh love God, that. Not just, man, I love God. that. He's like no, not no, leaving. I love that. It's all like right. Like it's all right. No prisoners, my like, God. It's all right, my man. The but myth of the good young Greek like player is as imaginary as Costa me. with a K's girlfriend. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm gonna show this to her tomorrow. I'm showing this to her. Oh my but anyway, God, I do want to clarify. But I do want to clarify, guys. Like us at Gate Seven International, and basically every Greek fan, pretty much, we don't care where our players from. They could be from another galaxy for all we care. Yeah. Olympiakos and every club just want the best players to play for their team. It's just that it's a shame that we don't have many or a significant amount of Greek players coming through the academies and making it to the first team. And there's a reason behind. There's no racism involved. There's no uh, hate towards Greek players. It's just that it's just not working out right now. And yeah, that's it's not working. Let, let's just be honest. Yeah. It's not working. The academy at Olympiaco is not producing enough. Um, yeah. And, and something's got Obviously, you know, like, look at Pauk even. I know they don't produce, like, <coughs> like whatever. But they, they have players who have come from their academy and whatever are fine, you know, but I don't know. Like she got us. What, what's his name? She got us. Something. We like don't that. have the us. patience. We you don't know, have the patience. But like, yeah. Nulis, like Costas like, Vernikos. Costas Vernikos said in the show, there's yeah, no yeah, patience. Yeah. He did. He did. He did. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That was, and that that's was why we need to find thing. another villain, you know, that worked out so well for us. Why, why yeah. don't we find another version? <laughs> of that? Anyway, if we can't do it in Greece, why don't we send them somewhere where we know that they can do it for us, you know? Do you know, mate, e even if you send them to Forest and play them in the reserves, the level of the reserves in the UK compared to the Greek Super League is already better. I swear yeah, to yeah. God. I swear yeah. to God. You send, like, your good B team players and you send them to England to play in the reserves under 23s, where they have three players from the first team that drop down and can play in the under 23s reserve league. 
they they will learn more there than playing in the Greek second division, and they'll come back stronger. But if we want to make use of that relationship with Forest, yeah, take them over. Like let's do like you know Steve Cooper's it's people right. work. If, it's like you know, study abroad or something, you know. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that's such a like. If we don't have an established relationship, like with a Willem or an Ajaccio uh, in back back in France, like we did before, we've got Forest and the reserve in the UK, like in England. It's it's another level, man. It's a different pace. Yeah, I think I think that's something that they need to look into. There's an option. There's an option for a player like Liatos. If they don't think, like I've heard so much about Liatos, my God, the next Galetti, blah, 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 whatever. Like, send him. Send him to play in England for a season and come back. And let's see. Let's see. Uh, I, I, the, you know, I think Lag has made the comment and some others as well. Like the Greeks are over, young Greeks are overrated and, they're built up by the press and then they're, you know, they're, they're torn down by the press as well. And one day they're the Greek Messi and then the next day they're, you know, Fed Fadzil is playing in Saudi Arabia. And but so look, he, even, even so with, uh, what's his is. name, uh, Kitos, yeah. it seemed to work out, you know, for him. He's yeah. playing good. He's enjoying his football. He's happy. And he comes back to Olympiakos in the summer and let's see, you know. Let's see. It's just projects. Yeah. And, but they do fail. Like, let's be honest, Surlis has epically failed for Fortuna Citadard or whatever Fortuna yes. Citadard. Yeah. Like, but that happens. They have like a poor ownership structure. There was some Barack Yomaz was doing so anyway. That it was, was a weird move. Of, it was a disaster move. scenario move for him to be honest. So yeah. Anyway. anyway. Yeah. And there are um like some I think VKD you made a comment about you know who stays, who goes excuse me we'll it's do not, that I mean, another time not yeah time exactly yeah, that's another time guys like it's too, way too early for that but we can do uh, coaches great and match of the man of the match yeah we can wrap up and do that i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna actually go out and i'm gonna give michel today a i honestly don't think it was that great of a coached game by michel but the fact that he started so lucky it worked and I thought the subs were actually better timed this week. I'll give him a B minus B. Um, and then my man of the match. Why are we even talking? Zolakis uh, was man of the match. I think it should be like man of the match, not Zolakis, you know, like, because it's clear he was the man of the match anyway. He's so if it's not Zolakis, who who would you give it to? Samaseku maybe, uh, yeah. or maybe okay. uh, Radine was quite good today. I thought anyway. I love him. I yeah, I'm starting to I really love like the guys. Yeah. Finally, finally, a, a, yeah. a quality fullback. I love yeah. him. Knock three on wood. Like, I swear to God. Like, three I swear years. To three bad. years. We haven't seen that. Yeah. Let's see. I love his. I love his close control. He's good. He's so good on the ball. He's yeah. so good on the ball. Like that. That thing where he kind of just like he has it. He has it on his lace, and then he kind of chops it. And he, he, he can he, go past people, man. Yeah, like, and he can go past people too. Yeah, yeah, he's not yeah. afraid. Like, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I he's was no waiting. Penny la -la, but yeah, he's all right. Yeah, he'll do. <laughs> I was waiting to see him at least five games. It's like five games for me is always kind of, I want to see a player for five games. And then I can, I can say, mm -hmm. I won't normally say I love him or I hate him, but yeah. I, I've, I think I've decided I love him. <laughs> Costa, Costa with the K. I will never forget when we were at the Atalanta game, Kenny Lala giving up that goal, laying face first on the... It's like an image I think I'll never forget. Like, I'll always remember Kenny Lala for just plant, yeah. face plant, like, for 30 seconds after the goal was scored, just, like, face on the floor. It was... Yeah. Mentality zero. That that was, like, an image I think, like, will never leave my mind. Like, I don't think it was caught on the TV, too. And no, we it were wasn't. Like, we were, like, 15 feet from him. As well, we yeah. were like 15 feet from Kenny, and he was just like, "The guy was finished." You were like, "Oh my god, this this is sad," you know. Anyway. I mean, obviously, I'm going to give it to Costa Zolakis. I said it in the, at the beginning of the show, almost an hour and a half ago. Why? Uh, I'm going to give Mitzel a B. N not a great coaching game. Um, let too many uh, let uh, Aris create too many chances that I'm struggling to see title rivals like Pauk, Panathinaikos, and Ayak missing those kind of chances. Not much in attack, but then again, he did uh, 
He did shuffle the deck with uh, some ballsy decisions, one of which was uh, Jolaikis, but finally giving Samaseko his chance. Amazing performance. Um, but still, Olympiakos won. I'm still waiting to see more uh, more and better from Mitchell. That's a B. <clears throat> yeah, for me, what's left to say? Yeah, clearly, Dolag is man of the match. If it's not Dolag, is then I already expressed my love for Rodine. So probably, mm. um, I I, I want to say like we didn't really talk about. Uh, we talked a bit about Samaseku. I'm I'm still. I still haven't seen enough. Like I haven't seen my five games of Samaseku. You yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but really nice ball over the top. I don't know if he intended that, like to play it, play it the way he did to El Arabi, but it it sat up very nicely for El Arabi. He played the ball over the top like that, you know, put spin yeah. on it over the defense. It um, a few crossfield passes where everyone was like, "Oh, Samaseku can't pass," yeah. like he's a runner. Yeah. But he had a few where he switched fields, and it looked like. Yeah, I was like, oh, Jan and Vyab, no, Samasek. No, no, they were like, uh, they were like some 20 yard ping, pinged passes that he played. And I was like, yeah. okay, he can yeah, exactly. pass the ball. Exactly. Maybe it's a confidence thing because he, like, I think there's no chemistry there. There's no chemistry with, with M. Villa. And I would like to see him in a midfield with, um, like, with Jan playing the deep lying playmaker and maybe, like, Samaseku a little bit further forward so that he can like use his speed, he can like press the opponents. He's really good at intercepting, he's really good at tackling, he's good in the air. And uh and then with Huang, like in a in a three-man midfield, I would like to see that. I don't know if we will ever see that, but I feel like that's a nice midfield trio to play against a team like Ag, for example, or a team like Balk, who like like to play the ball out the back, like a team with three midfielders, like two, like Huang and, and Samaseku that can really press high up the field. Um, I I don't, and, and sorry, I know we've already gone like almost an hour and a half, but I don't understand the the Jan M. Villa hate. Hate's a, hate's a big word, but guys, M. Villa's contract is up at the end of the summer. And I promise you, we are not going to find a defensive midfielder that can play the ball out of the back the way that exactly. Jan can. That, that ability that he has to play the ball vertically through the lines, like 15, 20 yard passes along the ground. And you might say some things about, you know, his speed, his age. That There's some value there still. And I don't like... We're not renegotiating Jan and Villa's contract, but when I read stuff like some of the stuff that I read about him, think long and hard. When is who's the last player that Olympiagos had in his position that could play the ball like Jan, that could switch the ball like Jan? And don't say no, Luka Mil- and, and don't say no, Luka Milivojevic. For me, probably it's Pablo Orbaith. Yep, Pablo Urbaith. Uh, you're yeah. talking about in general, like ever, like yeah, like a deep lying playmaker that could play the ball like Jan. It wasn't Luca. It wasn't Milivojevic. Not the same. They're not the same player because I Orbaith know that's amazing. Orbaith because, was so quality, man. Like, dude, this summer the discussion is going to be Luca Milivojevic is coming back. Watch. Yep. That's what's yeah. going to happen this summer. Luka Milivojevic is going to replace Jan and Via. If I, I'm pretty sure of it. I'm pretty sure of it. Guillerme... Uh, I don't... Is Guillerme a six? He's like he's like a six, eight. He's kind of what you want Samaseku to be. Oh, man, I would love, I would love to have Guillerme back if that were possible. But I don't think they're the same player. Anyway, I went went on a tangent there um it was good on you. yeah i went on a bit of a tangent but um i guess we're we're, we're wrapping up yeah happy let, let's be happy tonight we we won we're through to the next round we've got more games against ayak and the next game is now sunday against offy at home 
Labro has disappeared. <laughs> yeah, now people... Gate 7 without Labro Sirmos is like a cone with no ice cream. I have spoken. It's Labro, come back, show your face. Yeah, anyway, people... guys, I mean, another amazing result for Olympiacos. Let's take it game by game because there's nothing, there's no other way, in my opinion. There's no better mentality right now than this. Let's see what happens. You're right. It's a season of ups and downs. It's a it's a roller coaster season. I'm sure we're gonna have <laughs> we're gonna have more ups and downs during during the you know the remainder of this season. But if there's ever gonna be you know one constant throughout this season, it will be Gate Seven International. We're here through good and the bad, wins, draw, losses, whatever it is, guys. We're here. It's great to be back. Uh, Midweek episode tonight after a nice victory. Gostas Dolagis being the hero tonight. And I think that's all we've got time for. Gosta, any last remarks before we shut it down? Avoid too much negativity. This has been a very difficult season, but the club is well. The club is healthy, which is extremely important. Let's not forget back in 2010, Olympiacos finished fifth. Socrates Kokalis was selling, and the favorite at, at one point to, to buy to, to buy the club. Well, if he had if he had bought the club, Olympiacos would have probably been playing derbies with Pau Roof right now. So let's keep it positive. The club is well, which is very important ahead of next season. Let's remain positive, guys. Some positivity to end the night. Okay, ladies and gents. Opportunity again, if you haven't done so already, Labro, you do the sub call. You don't do it enough. If if you haven't done so already, everyone, please make sure to subscribe. Don't do it like a grumpy old man. Like do it do it with some oomph. Like believe what you're saying. <laughs> everyone, if you made it this far, if you love the content you see, if you hate Sky New, never mind. No. But it, if you Just love Olympiacos, <laughs> if, if you, you love dislike Olympiacos, SDNA GR, if you dislike SDNA GR, Delia GR, make sure to like and subscribe to our content. Costa's yes. hating it. Costa's <laughs> like, I'm a professional in this industry. Anyway, Costa, <laughs> uh, you do it. You, you do it. You do you it. Show it. Fun. I, I do what? The subscribe. Do the like, subscribe, cool. Uh, guys, if we make it to, we're looking for our th third. Uh, we're looking for 3,000 subscribers now. Okay, yes. well, if we make it to 3,000 subscribers before the end of February, see, I'm giving you time. Labros is going to come out and he's going to give the 3,000 subscriber. No, actually, he's, no, no, forget it. Just if we make it to 3,000 subscribers, Labros is going to come out for an for an hour long rant. About everything that's wrong at Olympiacos. Honestly, okay, promise. yeah, I'll do it. I'll do that's it. That's a good one. I'll write an outline and maybe. You don't yeah. need to do an outline. I know you've got it in you. The I episode, got it in me. The Honestly, I'm always ready called, to just go in. The episode's going to be called "Grumpy Old Man." <laughs> there you go. God damn. There you I, have I'm it, guys. Ready. I'm always ready. I'm always. There you ready. have it, guys. New content coming as soon as we reach three thousand subs. We're going to have an hour long. Labrador's yeah. and, and I and I'm just gonna sit here and eat popcorn and listen. We're just gonna watch, we're gonna like lose subscribers. People are like, we don't want that. What is this? <laughs> are you kidding? You're gonna go viral, man. <laughs> oh god, I hope not. Jeez. <laughs> okay, guys, wherever you are, Galovradi, Kalimera, if you're in Australia, I have listeners from Australia. Um, it's earlier on the west. What time is it on the west coast right now? It's 2.30 in the afternoon, 2.45. in the afternoon. Good afternoon to the West Coast. Excellent. Excellent night, guys. See you next time. Like and subscribe. Wegate 7 International by the fans, for the fans. See you next time. Oh,